Hi, this is Patty Bennett with pattysdance.com. I'm back with another fun video with Sarah hey. Douglas. <laughs> How fun is this? We've had a good day today, huh? It's been good. Busy. We've been busy. We've been we working hard. Been. <laughs> yes. So we're crafting at Shelly's house and we are having a blast. One of the things that I asked for from Stampin' Up! as part of my million dollar celebration was for the concept art artists to design a project for us to make. And look at this amazing. So, oh. so you can see the little die cut piece and then it comes with three cards, all with the same design. There's one, two, one, three. <laughs> And it just so happens to feature my favorite bundle in the Occasions catalog. So let's show them what's in this. All right. This is one of the bundles that comes with three different products all bundled together at a discount. So you've got your Botanical Blooms stamp set. And then you've got your Botanical Garden Designer Series paper up here. And the Botanical Builder Framelit dies. Awesome. Awesome. So that bundle together... It's fifty-one seventy-five. Is it? Mm -hmm. So you hit your celebration of benefits, and so you can choose either the um, botanical botanicals for you stamp set or the botanical gardens designer vellum sack. But you want both of these things. So the project has more supplies than what's in the bundle. So you may choose to add. Right. So you probably <laughs> will need some extra cardstock and ink pads in these coordinating colors. So we have Hello Honey, Cajun Craze, Mossy Meadow, Mint Macaron, and the Whisper White Pad, the Craft Pad. So those are some of the colors that they used. You might have some of those though, um, and also the cardstock in those colors as well. Yep, and especially in the cardstock pack. So these are designed so that you can get the three colors you need, and they're all bundled together, ready to go. We also included the Botanical Gardens jewels and some old Olive Baker's twine. And of course you have to have envelopes to send with your cards. So That's we included right. those as well. And to make the actual box, this is the craft card stock. Mm -hmm. So this is adorable. They made this all for us. This is so cool with all the dimensions. So I'll have this information on my blog, but you'll need the craft card stock as probably as well as the trimmer because you'll want to cut and score your lines. And then this beautiful edge is die cut with that edge right there in those thinlets. It's so pretty. I love that. It's unlike anything we've had. It's so it's different. So and, all, and the framelits come with so many different pieces and some of these cool little flowers that, that just pop out. So a little bit different use for the, the framelits. So kind of fun. It's awesome. Yeah. So if you want to decorate the cards like they did, then this is the celebration stamp set with that gorgeous big just for you greeting. And they stamped it with the whisper white. So that's on the vellum on the vellum stack. So those would be those two free products you could get if you need to purchase all these supplies. You get awesome. two free bonus celebration stuff. Bonus. Of course, you could pick anything in the celebration catalog, right? But, you know, to make this beautiful make project. This project. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So we're going to dive in. They made us these great little packets all ready to go. I love that. <laughs> this is so fun. So we're going to make these great cards with this box. And then I'll be back to show you more on how to make it. So thanks, Sarah. It's been an awesome day. It's been fun. Have fun making your cool botanical card holder. Happy celebration. <laughs> Let me show you how to make the cards that are in this fun project. So here are the three cards that the concept artist came up with, and you'll notice it's basically the same design. They've just used different background papers from the botanical set, different vellum from the botanical vellum, and then different die-cut flowers. A couple of great tips here that they use that I wanted to share with you are how to cut your vellum to get the most out of the pack and then I loved this design element you have your folded cardstock and the designer paper goes all the way to the edge I love that I always cut mine a quarter inch or a half inch smaller and I layer it so that you can see the cardstock but I just love this look. I don't know why, it's just something I haven't been doing, but I love this, so I'm going to be doing this. 
The Botanical Garden Suite is on pages 26 and 27 in the catalog, just as we were showing you, and I wanted to call your attention to the cardstock pack because these are the three colors that we're using, Cajun Craze, Hello Honey, and Mossy Meadow, and you'll find that right here. It's a nice way to just purchase the colors that you need for your project. So these are the colors that are really coordinating nicely with this designer paper. You can use any of the patterns in the Botanical Gardens paper stack or paper pack. These are the three that the designers used. I love them. They happen to be three of my favorites in the pack. Oh, well, who am I kidding? I love all 12 patterns in this package. They're gorgeous. And then the three colors of cardstock from that cardstock pack. And so these are just your standard size cards, and they're just scored and folded in half. So what I wanted to show you about the vellum that is such a great tip, this is the little 6x6 botanical vellum uh, celebration gift that you can select and there are different patterns, they're white on vellum so it has uh, just a very subtle pattern to them and you can use any of them. But what the designers did was they cut these pieces at three inches wide so that you get two out of a sheet and that's really a great tip because otherwise if you were to cut this vellum larger to fit the whole card front you'd only get one of these per sheet so this way you're getting two and they've cut them at about five inches tall you, you know that could vary it doesn't have to be exact it could be five and a quarter or four and three quarters and then the first thing you're going to want to do after you cut your pieces of vellum is to go ahead and stamp them with the white stays on ink pad and then you're going to set them aside for just a moment to let them dry because it'll take just a couple of minutes for this ink to dry. Um, it is a fast drying ink but it just is better to not touch it right away when it's still wet. So I have this large just for you stamp and that is also a celebration item and it is just um, a really great image. I love how large and bold it is. I love this font. So then you just stamp and you, uh, did you see I was holding down that vellum while I lifted up the stamp? That's an important tip. And it uh, might be a little bit hard to see until you actually get it onto the dark paper and then it really stands out. So that would be your first tip is to go ahead and stamp your vellum and then we can start assembling the cards. When you're done stamping with your white stays on pad on the vellum, this stamp will look pretty stained and so you want to be sure to use your stays on cleaner and you just unscrew the cap and then it has a little fuzzy cleaner tip at the top and the uh, cleaning solution will come down into that fuzzy cap and you rub it around onto your stamp and then you can try to get it sort of in between and around on the outside as well but the cleanup pad is going to help us get those areas and then this side is wet. I just have water on this side, so I just rub it on there. And I try not to do this when I clean because it will spray your work area. So I'm just sort of wiggling uh, as opposed to you know scrubbing like that. And then you can dry it off on this side, on your dry side. My personal preference is just to have an old washcloth handy to dry my stamps. And then I'll check it and look at it and say, okay, well, it still has some white around the outside. And then sometimes what I'll do is on my pad, I'll just try and take off some of that white or whichever color ink you're cleaning. And I can go back on here and put some more solvent cleaner on there and then clean it again but actually you know that ink around the outside is not hurting anything so if it stays there it's really not a big deal as long as you get it off of the actual stamp image area you're fine so I'm just gonna leave that I have lots of stamps that look like that it's okay I know that would really bother some people but it's okay 
And then just a note about our stamp and scrub pad. You know, these come out and I take mine to the sink and I run water over it and I rub some hand soap onto it. I do that sometimes a couple times a day, maybe three or four times a day if I'm stamping a lot. And then I just rinse it and drain off any excess water and bring it right back over to my case and I just keep going. So if you keep these clean, uh, I mean this looks practically brand new and it feels brand new. I've been using this probably four or five years whenever this came out is when I bought it. So this should last you years and years and years if you keep washing it with some warm water and some hand soap every time that you use it. The last part of our project is to create this darling box that holds the cards and envelopes. Isn't this cute? It's so creative. This is the pattern that the concept artist made for Sarah and I, and this will be on my blog, so if you need a close-up of this or more information, on YouTube you can click up here and this link will go to the corresponding post with a picture of this or of course if you're already on my blog at pattystamps.com you'll see this down below the video. So it's a six by ten and a half piece of the 12 by 12 craft cardstock. And I do believe you could also use a piece of crumb cake cardstock if you didn't have this, but this is just um, sort of a different weight and it's a neat feel for this box. So this is kind of a fun product if you don't have this. It's currently on page 148, the 12 by 12 craft cardstock. I'm using the Simply Scored tool because I love this for scoring and there are several score marks to make here on this project. So the first thing to do is to score it at the three quarter inch mark. And then the six and three quarter inch mark. And the seven and a half inch mark. Then you're going to turn it and score it at three quarters. and at five and a quarter. So this is basically giving you a three quarter inch border around three sides and this portion of the box. And then you'll grab your paper snips and you can see here that there is just a diagonal cut right here in this corner and this corner and then they have snipped out these two portions. I found when I made mine that I actually didn't have to cut out that entire part. So I'm going to make those two diagonal cuts and then when I created mine I just snipped here and here and that was all I needed to do. So you can either cut that little square out or you can just make the two snips like that. And the next step will be to take this beautiful vine die cut that comes in the botanicals die cut framelit package and you're going to place it along this edge and that's what's going to give us this beautiful vine edge right here. And so you do have to think for just a minute before you place this on here which direction this goes and the way that I remember it here is that this edge is going to actually do the cutting and this is just cutting out little leaf shapes so you can see here that I've got it going the right direction so I will take this over to my Big Shot and cut this so that I have this edge before I start folding and applying any adhesive. Okay, so I have die cut this along the edge and I'm just going to pull that piece away and pop the rest of these out. Not all of them fell out. And so now I have that great edge. Let me just work on a piece of grid paper here so you can see this because that's almost the color of my background, isn't it? 
Then you'll use your bone folder and you'll just start going ahead and creasing all of those score lines that you made. So everything is scored with my bone folder and then you pretty much just put the box together and I followed the way that they did it which was to overlap those little triangle pieces so that one is on the outside and one goes to the inside and I adhered those with a glue dot so just simply pressing a glue dot onto each triangle piece like that and then adhering all four of them and then these little pieces that I said you can either cut off or not you could just stick them down or you can cut them off doesn't matter either way and then you can put this flap to the outside if you'd like and for that I would use tear and tape because it is just fabulous or you could put those flaps to the inside if you preferred to have them hidden and really it doesn't matter either way and when you put the tear and tape down if you have trouble peeling off the white part I like to use my piercer and just sort of pierce into it and lift up and that seems to help to release that white tape and then I'm just going to fit those over the edge and put my hand inside to be able to push against there and then there's my box of course I'd have to do those two corners up there but that is really just all there is to the box and when you get the corners done then it'll just be a nice little box for your cards you can decorate it with one of the sayings in the celebration set and some of your die cut flowers and one of the cute little rhinestone flowers that pretty it has a little rhinestone in the inside and then it's just the perfect size to hold your cards this has the three cards and envelopes but you could definitely do four cards they would fit in here so whatever works for you and it's just such a great little gift have fun making yours and if you need any of those supplies you can click shop online at pattystamps.com you can leave me a comment you can ask questions I love to hear from you thanks so much for joining us hope you enjoyed the project